This is Windows 2000 booting on an SSD. thirty one seconds to the desktop that's how fast windows two thousand boots on an ssd hmm it's a sunday and i'm bored and i don't have much to do oh look what we have here it's a good old thinkpad z sixty one now if you don't know what the z sixty one is it looks just like any other ThinkPad, except for one difference. It has a titanium cover on the back of it. Now, one unique part about the ThinkPad Z61 is the fact that the ThinkPad logo, or IBM logo on earlier production models, is actually metallic and raised as well on the models with the titanium case like this one. However, inside the ThinkPad logo, is the same as it is on older ThinkPads, with the ThinkPad logo just being flat on the case instead of raised like it is on this model, outside that is. Now right now this looks just like any other old ThinkPad when it's open, aside from the outer case being titanium. However today, we're going to upgrade the crap out of this thing by giving it some juice with a SanDisk SSD that's 240 gigabytes. Now let's put this thing in the ThinkPad and see how well it runs. When you pull the hard drive caddy in this model out, you can clearly tell that this computer was made before SSDs became commonplace, as it actually has several rubber bumpers around the disk itself. Now on a hard drive, this would mean one thing as hard drives are very easily susceptible to shock. However, this on the other hand is an SSD, and I don't really think we'll be needing the bumpers other than the fact that it makes the disk slide in the right way anyway. I mean, it, it seems kind of hilarious though to have an SSD with bumpers around it. So now I have this SanDisk SSD Plus drive, and as you can see, it's pretty thin, and it is also very, very light. I mean, this thing is a lot lighter than your standard hard drive because all that's really in here is flash memory which still seems to cost a bunch of money because this drive was $70. I mean, prices are going down, but it's still a bit expensive, though it is a good way to make your old laptop faster. So let's put this thing back in the ThinkPad and power it up. Now let's turn on the Z61. And as you can see here, the SanDisk drive is in fact being detected in the BIOS, and it says right here, ATA HD0 SanDisk. So, we've got the drive in here. But now it's time to do something a bit different with this ThinkPad, and that is installing Windows 2000. Now, I found Windows 2000 drivers for a lot of devices on this laptop, so nearly everything should work. So let's put Windows 2000 on here and see if this will work and how fast it will run on this laptop. As after all, inside this laptop is a Core Duo and 2 gigs of RAM. So when you combine that with an SSD, it'll be interesting to see how well Windows 2000 runs on here. Now as you can see, setup is loading Windows 2000. And I added F6 because I have a driver on the floppy disk that's actually for AHCI for this very chipset. So I'm going to see if that works. And if it doesn't, I'll have to 
switch back to ATA. If this works, it'll actually be faster than it would have been if I had not set it up like this. So, it's currently loading the setup files. Let's see what it does. So, right now, it's not finding the controller. So, I'm going to have to enter S, Enter. And as you can see, I can now choose the chipset this thing has. So I did some Googling and I found out this laptop most likely has the ICH7 chipset. So I'm going to hit enter here. Let's see if it goes right in. And it does. So text mode set up for Windows 2000 loaded, which is a pretty good sign, and... And as you can see, you can see the drive in HCI mode, which is great. Now this is Windows 2000 doing the slow format because Windows 2000 does not have quick format. And wow, this is formatting pretty quickly for Windows 2000. Now, I ran into a little bit of a roadblock while I was copying files because my camera's battery died and I had to run up and get another camera that had a charged battery while I put my other battery on the charger. But, as you can see, it copied all the files fine and... This right here is the fastest Windows 2000 startup you've probably seen thanks to the SSD and the fast hardware. I mean, look at that. It's already there at the desktop real quickly. and it's just zipping right through setup. See, it's already here at this screen. And now, sure, there's no drivers. I'm going to have to install them off a of flash drive, but still, look at this. This is just blowing right through setup in much less time than I thought it would. And Windows 2000 is already set up. That just took only a few minutes. Let's boot straight to the hard disk again, which as you can see is the SSD and... This right here is the fastest Windows 2000 startup you'll probably ever see. Windows 2000 on an SSD. Mm. Now it's time to go install the drivers, which I'm not going to show on camera, but as you can see, Right next to all the big yellow exclamation points is under disk drives SanDisk SSD. It works, guys, it works. So I've installed nearly all the drivers, and as you can see, Windows 2000 is starting up blazing fast on this SanDisk SSD that only cost, what, $70? And especially if you have an old laptop with the SATA port, at least, this is a good investment. Because it will make your computer a lot faster. I mean, it only really runs slow with this part. And even slightly slow. Because right now, as you can see, it works. 
I'm just gonna ignore this um, simply because I really don't need the modem. So as you can see here, it works just fine. Look how fast everything is on here. Even IE5 opens up that instantly. You have to see it to believe it. It really does work on this SSD for the true aesthetic experience. Okay, so I decided to install a game on here just to see how well the SSD can load a game on Windows 2000 and the game's Quake 3 Arena, of course. Let's go to uh, Game Options. Uh, actually system, let's go and change the video mode all the way up to I guess this will be as good as it gets because this game doesn't support widescreen let's go to multi let's go to a uh, first uh, multiplayer um, actually I'm gonna go set up my player first I'm gonna name my player uh, of course PA6000 and I'm gonna go to a uh, model. Let's go and play this game right now. Um, servers. Let's change it to internet because that's the only way you'll get servers. I don't know why it sets itself to local by default, but let's stop. Um, fight real quick loading times of course it works as well as you'd expect for Quake 3 And there you have it, Quake 3 on an SSD on Windows 2000. And my Quake 2 skills aren't too great, but I'm using a track point anyway. So there you have it, Quake 3. And I am doing it pretty poorly. So there you have it, a game running on Windows 2000 on an SSD. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.